Hi, good evening, and welcome to The Power of Now. I'm Coach Mitchell. And I'm Coach Darren. Tonight, we're so glad you decided to join us as we talk about action, committing to commanding more out of 2024. We want to just talk through some of the things that we've experienced, some things that we've seen, and just to touch base to make sure that we're encouraging you, we're motivating you, and offer you any type of assistance in helping you achieve the growth that you want to see in your life. Yep, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> and as always, you know, we hope that you get engaged, you know, in this process and in this conversation. And when you join, you know, please let us know. Uh, what's the procedure that you do? Go on, on, on Facebook. Yeah. You said there's, there's a link or something. Yeah, you? just yes. um, go ahead. At the top of your screen, you should see um, grant StreamYard permission to see your name. Hmm. All that does, if you click on the link, it just allows us to see your name so that we're not seeing just Facebook user and we can acknowledge your presence with us tonight. So if you're on Facebook, just click on the StreamYard link. It's not copying any of your, your information. It's just get, granting StreamYard access to show your name in our stream. Yes. So anyway, here we are on the ninth day of the new year and pretty much know that that's when people's motivation and, you know, the drive to make changes, is, it starts to wane, you know, and they eventually give up. So our first question is, are you still, first of all, did you start with good intentions for 2024 and how are you making out? Now, do you still feel empowered, encouraged, motivated? Or have you already hit that first wall? Right. Yeah. You know, that's so um, important because you can get so caught up in the, you know, mundane processes of life. And then the mundane data that you're seeing just fed to you constantly on social media platforms. And it's easy to throw your hands up. But we're here to let you know that you, it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. There are some actions that you can take if you just commit to being disciplined enough to walk through the process. Yes. So, you know, you want to start with one of the basic bits of advice that's only given when you're trying to make uh, a change. You know, we'll say, you know, there's an improvement, there's a change, and there's a transformation. Is you really want to start out with your, with your why. Mm -hmm. because that will keep you going. Uh, you know, the old quote that once you, uh, once you have your why, you can endure any how, which basically, you know, it says when you know why you're doing something, you know, <clears throat> that gives you that motivation because you keep putting the answer, you know, to your why in front of you, and that will help get you back up and going when you do feel a little def deflated because it's going to happen. And that's the other thing. It has nothing to do with you. Everybody goes through it. They say, you know, the greats are at that, that moment where they want to quit. Mm -hmm. So you don't take it personal, but you do want to stay in the game. You know? uh, we experience that all the time. And, you know, there are things that I've started and stopped. You know, I started with great intention and then you just get like, ah, I don't want to be bothered. Then you got to start up again. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's never too late to develop a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. And that's why we felt it very important to come on to help encourage you as you, you know, go along your journey to help keep you motivated because mm -hmm. we know how challenging it is. Because as entrepreneurs, as business um, people, we know the challenges that, you know, and the obstacles and roadblocks that may come up, but you can recalibrate and reset those, look at those challenges as opportunities yes uh, you know you just mentioned something that's real important uh a lot of instructors have been out there talking about it for a few years corporations have now you know worked it into some of their training but that term growth mindset uh you know it's part of my level up thinking that i you know mm -hmm. put together years ago and it's amazing that not everybody has a growth mindset mm -hmm. Uh, and for those who may not be familiar to put it, you know, the quick definition is a growth mindset 
is the thought process that you can always learn and become better. That's really you know, the, the short definition right. versus a fixed mindset where some people have that. A lot of people like this is this is who I am. I'm stuck and this is mm-hmm. going to be me forever. Right. I don't need to learn anything or I can't learn anything. Right. So, and even the old cliche that mm-hmm. you can't teach a dog new tricks. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not true. And secondly, we're not dogs. Right. Oh, right. So mm-hmm. as, as long as we're mm-hmm. walking on two legs and we are considered mammals, right? Mm-hmm. We have the propensity to learn. So no matter the age, no matter where you are, no matter where you stand, you can develop a growth mindset. Yes. It is a learned behavior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The you know something else that I didn't really connect the dots until a few years ago. What's that? Which is when you're on this journey of transformation, your energy levels are critical. Your physical and mental energy levels, because that's what really kind of fades away when you're feeling down and out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say it's your your mental, your physical and your emotional. And if you're in the right, long enough, your spiritual, they all basically, it's like they evaporate. They, you know, and you're gonna need all of that to keep you going. And I learned that probably one of the best places to start is with your diet <laughs> to get that physical energy. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and we won't go into it, but just you know, make a note of that, that if you're finding yourself that you're just not motivated, it could possibly be you need to make some changes to your diet. It could be as simple as you're not drinking enough water. Absolutely. You know, uh, not to overcomplicate it, but the takeaway is, you know, check your your physical diet. Maybe you need to exercise or move a little bit more, but that could be the cause of why you're feeling like I, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, so coach, let's talk a little bit about some of the accomplishments that you know our personal accomplishments, so that individuals can get an idea of what we mean by just persevering and having that growth mindset in different areas and sectors of our lives. What you want to go first? Or just... You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm writing a book. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my first book, my, my first published work was a spiritual journal. So I'm writing a book and I have been able to complete another chapter just in the last 30 days. And Coach and I are working on a project that we hope to launch in 2024. No, we don't hope to launch it. We're going to launch it in 2024. And I have completed, um, I developed a model and I've completed the training guide for that model. So even though we may not be working in tandem on the same components of this project. And he may not know that I'm working towards, you know, completing a particular task or goal towards the launch. The work is being done. And the point I'm making is you have to be disciplined and you have to be committed to doing just a little bit, starting doing a little bit every day or at Mm -hmm. least within the week. Um, or the month. You don't want to find yourself looking back, not having to even start it. So remember what our our mantra is. If mm. you do not start now, there yeah. will be no next yeah. or there can be no next or your next is going to look like your now, which is stagnation. Yes. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so I, you know, uh, for me, it's, it's finally going back to, I had some unconnected things. And I said, you know, I have all this content that I've accumulated, but it's not any place where I can easily share it. So one of the things I've been doing since New Year is really getting uh, the content together and putting it out there or setting a foundation so that it can easily be shared. Uh, And again, to help with the engagement. Now, most of you know that, you know, uh, my brand is called I Am, and it stands for I Am Possible Mall. It's kind of a play on the word impossible that's been broken up into I Am Possible. Uh, and it was, you know, 
it's comprised of a portfolio of brands. And they kind of, some of the brands kind of faded away, you know, the pandemic and then other things got in the way. And I only focus on a couple, but here's the strangest thing is outside events started occurring and it made me realize, well, I already had really built the foundation mm -hmm. and now everybody's honestly, it's going to sound egotistical, but now everybody's catching up to me because when I first rolled these things out, there was no, no interest. And now I'm seeing it build up. So now I'm almost like paying, playing catch up with myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what I've been working on, you know, putting things out there. And again, you've heard us talk about, uh, you know, one of the recent things is growing our own food. That's becoming huge now. Uh, <clears throat> you know, so now I'm trying to get all the knowledge that I've learned and all the resources that I've learned and put them in a place where I can easily share them with other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <clears throat> really been doing that and, you know, working even harder on my own health and wellness uh, uh, and also getting that information out there. So it's been really for me, the, the, the focus has been, you know, for this year is bringing, you know, the I am possible mall concept to light. And also to meet my deadline, because I have a huge deadline goal set for 2020, 2024. And so I have some catching up to do to be able to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I won't put it out there just yet, but well, I'll put it this way. 2024 is the year that I plan to actually break ground. I'll just leave it like that. So we're going to see how this plays out. Well, all right now. Uh, I can't wait. Yep. <laughs> but the key, the underlying theme here is being consistent. Yes. And con continuing with the commitment mm -hmm. to just do the work. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, then whatever you set your mind to is possible. That that's the takeaway. And I think um, coach also having accountability partners will help because when you become demotivated, it, it actually impacts your psyche and it just takes a lot of energy mm -hmm. from you. And when you're, again, we, you can't say it enough when you're looking at what everyone else is doing, and you are becoming overwhelmed, you have to take a step back because that can put you in a position of feeling like you are not capable and feeling feelings of incompetence. You have to forgive me, I have my, my Invisaligners on, so I, I have a little speech impediment tonight that I'm trying to talk all over my blinders, but <laughs> you have to remember that everyone was created to create mm -hmm. and all you have to do is just tap into that part of yourself that's begging for something more that's yes. begging for something different mm -hmm. that's just pleading <laughs> knocking to get out mm -hmm. and you know we talk a lot about journaling and you know I, it, it may seem like it's oversaturated overutilized but it is a great tool to really sit and get to discover who you are and what it is that you really want out of this life. Yes. Uh, uh, with with that, you know, being said, you know, we, again, we we're, we just transitioned from you know, like I said, excuse me, uh, into a new year, and one of the things you want to kind of. In, you, yeah. First of all, you want to, you know, come and actually say, how, how am I doing so far this year? Am I still on track? Uh, and if not, give yourself a moment to we say rest. You want to find that some quiet time. You know, you've heard me stress this before because it's really important uh, to really think. <clears throat> oh, bless you. Excuse you know, me. Recalibrate, you know, Give yourself a chance to also restore. And you want to do this phys uh, mentally and emotionally uh, and spiritually. Now, on a physical level, this is something, again, which just uh, having an exchange with someone uh, the other day, I was going to say, it might have been over the week, I don't even remember. But uh, <clears throat> when it comes to your body, 
you know, we were talking about we tend to eat too often, too much, and too long, meaning we eat throughout the day. And some people eat right before they go going to bed. And what that does is it never gives your body a chance to recover or restore or to heal because your body's only in two modes. Mm -hmm. It's either rest or digest. If your body's constantly digesting, it's not, you know, resting and resting is where it restores. The same thing applies to other areas of our life, which is why, you know, you want to take that time, you know, to, you know, and that doesn't mean like take two weeks or a week, uh, but you do want to give yourself a moment if it's just a few, you know, moments every day mm -hmm. and really begin to think about what is it that you're trying to accomplish this year. And that's why I shared the exercise, you know, after last week, uh, session and unfortunately I didn't get anybody engaged from this group but it was you know by writing something down that also acts with the accountability absolutely uh, you know we'll say that's like the first <coughs> yeah that's like the first level uh, you know oh and something before that that's really important you know to say in order to do something that you've never done you got to be somebody that you've never been mm -hmm. Well, how do you become somebody that you've never been? You know, first is you have to change your language because they say your language changes, a change in language changes one's consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, which is why the affirmations work, mm -hmm. why you know, people talk about the uh, vision boards and visualizations, but all that is to really get you to change your language. Correct. So that self-talk is, is, really important you know, and being around other people that share your goals, your visions, uh, and who you want to be because your conversations, you know, that's all part of changing that language to change your consciousness, to become the person that you're trying to be. Right. And even if they don't share mm -hmm. your goals, they support you in what mm -hmm. you do. And that's important to have a big support system Yes, mm -hmm. and that mutual support goes a long mm -hmm. way in keeping you motivated and on track. You know, we really encourage you to take a moment after this call, early tomorrow during your me time or your quiet time and set a goal for 2024 if you haven't done so, because it's so important to have something to work towards and to measure. And like Coach Darren said, if you have a vision board, Create that vision board and take one thing off of that vision board and work towards achieving it this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, like I said, when I take people through the process, and I'm kind of doing, doing this approach for uh, a while, is you know, you can uh, categorize or compartmentalize areas of your life, and that also helps in terms of deciding what you want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> You know, and if you, you know, on the I am well page, you know, I haven't broken up into 10 categories, but I would say, you know, start out with the most important ones is, you know, what goals do you want to have? You know, if you're still working, what goals do you want to have in your career? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what financial goals do you want to have? Which social goals do you want to have? Social meaning, what kind of connection, just social relationships. And that includes family, friends. Uh, colleagues, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and actually you have your your health, you know, goals, uh, you know, and then, you know, underneath there is like your, your important ones really is your physical, your mental, your spiritual, and your emotional uh, goals. All those need to be uh, nurtured in a way that makes you feel whole. Mm -hmm. uh, because if those are broken, any one of those are broken, you won't experience optimal health. If you don't have optimal optimal health, and that's that's a relative term, mm -hmm. but if you don't have that health, then everything else almost becomes secondary or really almost irrelevant, depending on how how bad your health you know becomes. Right, because mm -hmm. you feeling good about you makes all the difference. Yes, um, mm -hmm. because then you're not depending on external sources to validate your value mm -hmm. and you are valuable. And I think, you know, we'll talk about accountability partners a lot because if you have somebody that you can 
confidently confide your ideas in and share what your goals are, you'll find that that accountability partner can help move you past some of those moments when you just want to walk away. Mm -hmm. You know, um, back in, don't remember back when, but about 10 or 15 years ago when I went back for my master's, there were two other young women and we made a pact that we would be accountability partners and we would encourage and motivate each other to persevere because what we were doing was really aggressive. We did not take a modified master's course. We took a full loaded curriculum master's course and we committed to doing it in 12 months. Now, if you've ever done your master's, you know that that was a very heavy mm -hmm. course load. And there were mornings that we would cry at 2 a.m. trying to get through projects because we had three to five courses each semester and we doubled down in the summertime. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a goal that we set. But without my accountability partners, I wouldn't have made it. And all three of us graduated cum laude. So again, having those support systems in mm -hmm. place is critical moving forward in 2024. So if you haven't gotten one, and you know, my word this year is release because I, you know, I hold tight and play it close to the desk, as they say. Um, I don't let people in, mm -hmm. but this year I have to do it differently if I want it to work and I want to win. I want to win. So uh you and you know at the accountability partnership like i said which is again something why i put the exercise out there i i framed it so that people would see this was a process that would basically hold them accountable because by sharing it even if like i shared something you know uh, earlier and i was a little hesitant because like okay i'm gonna pull this off this year but i was like you know what I'm going to share it anyway, because mm -hmm. this is also part of changing the language to change the consciousness so that I become the person that needs to meet that goal, because it's a huge goal. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, having those accountability partners will help you, like you said, you know, in those moments. Now, you can have intentional accountability partners, and I never thought about this, but when you were sharing your experience, uh, being your master program, it took me back to, for me, it was undergrad, mm -hmm. where, you know, I, you know, I was in that institution where pretty much you were always struggling about, I need to get out of here. I can't take this. You know, it was just the type of school it was. Uh, so me and my friends, you know, we always look back and think about, you yeah, know, we became really close because we've seen each other at very low points. Uh, where one of us wanted to quit. And then the other ones would always encourage you, you can't do it. And they would give you a bunch of reasons. And you're like, okay, you finally would give in. Mm -hmm. We never really called ourselves. I don't even think the though, the, though the term accountability was in our vocabulary then, we never thought about it in terms of being there for one another. Mm -hmm. So I kind of look back at that as that those were passive. You know, nobody signed up to be your accountability partner, just maybe the friendship. Uh, or sometimes people just know why you need to hang in there for you. Right. You know, why you're doing what you're doing. You know, it could be for health reasons. It could be for family. Uh, you know, it could just be because it's something that you've always wanted. Mm -hmm. They just know it, how important it is to you. So they're going to encourage you, even if they were not your true accountability partner. So your accountability partners don't necessarily have to be somebody who actually signs up for the job. Right, right. Because you can just have those individuals in your life who just want to see you win yes. and they're going to encourage you and not just encourage you, but offer insight on things that you may want to do or not do. Yes. So right. it's very important. And, you know, I have a side goal and not that I'm really ready, but, you know, I want to I've always wanted to be two things, a lawyer <laughs> and a forensic scientist. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> now, I would go back to school in 2024 if I had a sponsor and I would go for my law degree. I would go and get my JD. Um, so if anybody's listening and they want to pay, I, I promise you I would complete that degree program if you pay for it, I promise you. <laughs> but anyway, my, my point is those are things I'm still not, I haven't lost sight of. Mm -hmm. Now the forensic scientist, yeah, that's a done deal. Good evening, um, Sister Tiffany. Hey, um, Brother Jesse. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, the forensic scientist, yeah, that's, you know, overload capacity on the brain that's diminishing a little bit, but <laughs> I definitely go back to law school. Well, uh, which like I said, having those types of goals, I, I, I don't know, I, I almost think it keeps you, keeps you kind of young. There's a useful aspect of still having those huge goals uh, because it, it's going to challenge you. And that's what you constantly want. You want to be challenged. Uh, and again, the challenge, it is relative. So what might be challenging to one person may not be challenging to someone else. Right. So when you're going back to your goal setting, you know, you want to make sure that you have goals in there that is going to make you become a new person in order to accomplish them, as we were just speaking about a little while ago. In that, you also want to have some easy goals because that's what's going to keep you motivated, you know, is those small goals that you can accomplish and check off because something psychological about saying, yeah, I got that done. I got that done. Right. I know. cleaned out my closet. It can yes. be as, you know, as, as small or, you know, insignificant, if you will, to some, but mm -hmm. surmountable to others because it's something that they have never done. So I think that's a great point hit that low hanging fruit, but yes. you also want some stretch goals in some there. Stretch goals, absolutely. Um, you want to push yourself mm -hmm. because you, you really want to be in that frame mm -hmm. of mind to have that growth mm -hmm. mindset to constantly be striving to achieve. Yes. Uh, and part of, of this, you know, we talked about changing your language, uh, you know, your self-talk. You also want to factor in how much are you learning? Now, uh, <clears throat> you know what? What are you reading? One of the things saying about, you know what, uh, the content putting out there, you know, uh, like I started putting out there the recommended books. Like I, you know, put out on the, you know, I, <clears throat> I'm part of a, a call it a, a media club. It originally started as a book club, but it became a media club. And we would read things last year was all about raising, you know, one's level of consciousness. So I would share things within the group. Now I'm deciding to start sharing with other people. And I you know, posted it on one of the Facebook pages and we'll start sharing more of the books that uh, you know, recommended reading. So whatever your you know, reading preferences are, you want to make sure you're getting some of that in. If you're on the web, if you're on social media, uh -huh, you want to make sure that you're using that platform for education. Mm -hmm. um, Especially LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn, definitely take advantage of the courses that they offer. Um, great learning platform especially if your organization sponsors some of those trainings because you can get certifications mm -hmm. and you don't have to come out of pocket for most of the content, you know, that they're offering. So, you know, we encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, Tiffany says she loves to read. Yeah. We are readers as well. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Darren is an avid reader, mm -hmm. but you know, I used to go through books four, five, six a week that slowed down after my master's program because I'm sure you can understand, <laughs> understand <laughs> why. But um, I've gotten back into the habit of picking up a book at least once a week and reading. So, you know, like you said, constantly take advantage of the resources that are available to you, especially the free ones. Yes. Can't be free. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I really, got into uh, the free stuff, probably around the pandemic where I, you know, you had time to really sit, uh, you know, 
yeah, you had time to sit. <laughs> and I came across a few things and then one thing led to another. Now, recently kind of came across something else. And for those who get on Facebook, if you're not getting these advertisements, then it's kind of unfortunate. But I got started getting advertisement for your know, free books. And once I signed up for one or two, I just kept getting you know more and more advertisements. Now, most of these, but they're coming out before the books are published. And with the author, the author's giving the book away, and the only thing they're asking in return is, can you give me a quick review? A review, that's a review. it. review, yeah. Uh, you know, but again, it's a, it's a free book. You know, now, sometimes I just have to kind of scan the book because between the time I got it and the time they want to review is really short. But again, it's a free resource. And, you know, again, you, you have it to come back later. So you don't want to miss out on that opportunity. And I find that you know, with the internet, it's just a wide resource between YouTube. Uh, oh, and the other one too, and I've heard so many people say this, that they've learned so much on TikTok. Something that originally came out and it was kind of, oh, that's, that's, for, that's for young folks, has now turned out to be a extremely powerful educational tool. Mm -hmm. Again, all depends on what you're attracted to, you know, uh, what you gravitate to. But you want to definitely make learning part of your journey because, as Coach Mitchell said, you know, it's about the growth mindset. You should be somebody different, not the essence of who you are, but certain outlooks, uh, you know, maybe certain things that you already know, you might should know even on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. But you know that there should be some growth between, you know, now and the end of the year. Exactly. And, you know, I think Tiffany said, you know, so many books, so little time it, that put me in mind of a Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> what was his name? Mr. Dwiddle? Mr. Whatever forgot, his name but was. But face. he loved, 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 loved to read. And little doomsday story. He, you know, was the last man on earth. And he found himself in the library reading when the bombs went off. And when he came out you know, he was just surrounded by all of his books and that made him happy. But he dropped his glasses, stepped on them, cracked them. So imagine being in a position where you had all the time, all of the opportunity and you dropped the ball right at the very end. So let's maximize the moments that mm -hmm. we have now. And, you know, um, Jesse said he tries to view videos that give him a healthy balance, you know, overall on his timelines. Absolutely. We mm -hmm. have to do that because otherwise, when we look around, we see a dumbed down society. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not being derogatory or putting anyone down, but people don't think for themselves anymore. Mm -hmm. They can't think through mm -hmm. or critically analyze a sentence if you put it in front of them and pretty much pointed them to where things needed to line up, you know, and it's just unfortunate. Yes. Unfortunate. And if you have kids, you know, I highly suggest you sit them down at least one day a week in a corner with a book. Mm -hmm. In a corner with a book. Uh, so. I, I would I would even <laughs> challenge you more with actually with for yourself and your your you know your children as well is set a daily goal to read 10 pages of a book, Absolutely. five pages of a book. Because if you do that, then you know at the end of the month, you probably will have completed a book. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and then you keep increasing. And you want to kind of do that for other areas of your life as well. You know, if you're starting out, because you know, they say doing uh, one is better than doing none. So if you read one page, if you write one page, if you do one push-up, you know, uh, you know, you make these small changes that, you know, again, they will accumulate over time. Uh, so that's another, you know, approach. The other thing I, I want to... I was just okay. going to interject. And then it becomes a part of the norm. Yes. You don't even think about it. You just do it. 
Yeah. And that's where we're ultimately trying to get to, just doing it. Yes. You know, uh, just just do it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, maximize the moment. Yes. You know, that's the, the, the other thing. Uh, I just, uh, I have two thoughts. And I hope I don't lose one of them. But I want to kind of go back because when you mentioned, you know, Jesse's comment, it just made me think something else we don't want to omit, omit from our life. And I find myself doing this because I'm constantly, you know, listening to, you know, uh, personal, professional growth. Every once in a while, you know, not every once in a while, regularly, you got to incorporate music into that, you know, uh, as part of your program, because that's important too for multiple reasons, you know. Uh, but you want to make sure that you, you find time to listen to music and you find time to listen or at least read or watch something funny that's going to make you laugh. Mm -hmm. uh, music will make you dance and then some comedy or whatever will make you laugh. Both of those will add to your, your health and wellness, your energy levels, and that will also help to keep you going. You ever wonder why people wear headphones when they're in the gym or they're running? That's the power of music. So you don't want to miss out. Uh, what kind of music is totally up to you? I make my own music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I dance to it too. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Holker, thank you so much for joining us tonight. <laughs> yes, <she does. laughs> you know? I do. I'm not making it up. But yeah, you want to definitely make sure you incorporate music into your uh you know, your, your daily, you know, uh, routine or into your routine, you know. So, yeah, um, I said I was going to get out of the thought, yeah. but that's all right. It'll come back. It'll I hope. come back. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? No, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Finish so, what you were uh, saying. So, just again, we're going to do a quick recap before I move on. I didn't give me time for that thought to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, start off small, whatever it might be. You know, uh, you've heard me say before, you want to uh, change your environment so that it's conducive with, to the person that you want to be. You know, again, this is based on the principle that in order to do or be, you know, or to have something you never had, to do something you've never done, you got to become a person that you've never been. That's, that is just the way it is. Any Because you can't, stagnation is a result of who you are. So to change that, to get that momentum, you got to start working on becoming a new person in some area of your life. Uh, and again, how do you become a new person? You start with the language. Again, the self talk. You got to be, you know, being around other people and having those conversations will do wonders for you. Absolutely. You know? um, and, and you have to be compassionate and gentle with yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, you have to be you have to be compassionate with yourself. You know, if you're constantly talking down and putting yourself down, you want to change that narrative because yes. that self-talk is very important. And if the self-talk is critical or negative, then you're not going to be able to move forward. No. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. So, you know, we talked about your, your energy levels, how important they are and our energy levels. <coughs> where do they come from? They come from our health which is why we can't dismiss it. If we're not taking care of ourselves, our energy levels aren't going to, they're not going to be up and they're not going to be sustainable. And what do we do? We, you know, like to, you know, uh, you know drink the Mountain Dew. Like I'm still seeing people drink Mountain Dew or the coffee. Well, that doesn't last long and it really ends up having, uh, you know, an adverse effect in the long run. So, in so many different ways. Yes, yes. In so many different ways. But you want to kind of start at the, you know, fundamental is, yeah, I'm trying to do something. I'm in this for the long haul. You know, I need to have the energy to sustain myself. You know? Because if you're making big changes, they're, they are, they're going to be exhausting. You know? mm -hmm. uh, so you, you have that as well. We talked about the growth mindset, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. setting goals and committing to them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. creating a vision board or journaling, but at the very least set a goal and commit to achieving them. Yes. That's critical in, in 2024. Mm -hmm. That's critical right now. Yes. It's critical mm -hmm. in this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I did, before we started getting people on a live session, 
you know, I put it out there, you know, does anybody, have you found yourself already kind of just letting 2024 be a continuation of 2023 and not in a good way? You know, if you're, if you were in a power, you know, in a power play position in 2023 and you have momentum going and you're carrying that over, awesome. But if there was something in 2023 that you know that you needed to, you know, step up, and you said, I'm definitely doing a 2024. Mm -hmm. You came in on the first day or two. I'm going to do this. Have you already just said, you know what? I'll deal with it some other time. The first week is, is critical because it mm -hmm. flies by so quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, we have that day one, most people have off. Mm -hmm. And most people are recovering from the night before. So they're not actively yeah, doing mm -hmm. anything towards maximizing the moment towards setting a goal. It's all about recovery on day one. And then you have the second through the fourth, the fifth, and you've lost traction. Yes. Because you, you the time flies by so quickly. It's like, oh, wow, this week is already gone and I haven't done X, Y, Z. You know, I'll get to it. That's mm -hmm. that same mindset that we had previously. We'll get to it. We can't afford to get to it anymore nope. it's like if you have you know kids or if you have you know staff members someone you're asking them to do something and they tell you they will they would mm -hmm. they are they're gonna mm -hmm. i was going to do mm -hmm. that you know i used to tell my son I, I would love for you to bring your friends by so i can meet them because it's been so many years that you've been telling me about them and i haven't met them and he said, well, what friends are you talking about? Most of my friends I bring home. I said, the ones that you don't bring home are would have, yeah. yeah. I was, and I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. Because it never happens. It never happens. So my point is, move beyond the excuses. Yes. Move beyond the I was, I'm gonna, and I'm going to. Get to it. Yes. Get to it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <clears throat> so... You have to like kind of this comes back to you know what was all being in a moment. Because when you come in a moment, that's when you have that opportunity to really talk yourself into doing that thing that you know you should be doing. You told yourself that you had to do it, but yet you're not. So in that moment, it's like, okay, you know what? Let me go. And it can be something like something like, let me go prepare my meal for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know. Or let me go exercise. Let me go pick up that book. Let me go write down my goals, which I've been putting off. So in those moments, you know, where it's right at the forefront of your consciousness, you want to then just, you know, take advantage of that. Let me just go do it. That will actually send, and this is a whole thing about, you know, building, uh, you know, really good habits. It's you know, it's going to send an impression to you again, to your consciousness, which is almost a good feeling. Right. That's why the small goals are so important because it gives you a feeling like, okay, I accomplished something. Right. Uh, the endorphins kick in mm -hmm. because like you said, it's like, oh, I did that. Yeah. I did uh, that. And I don't have to do it later. Correct. I yeah. don't have to do it uh, later. You know, and this again, it, it really doesn't matter what it is, you know what? And you use the example of cleaning out your closet. Yeah, it's something that's been nagging you. Because all those little things will, will actually drain you because you're like, okay, you know, I always say, oh gosh, you know, you got all these unfinished projects. Let me go knock one or two out. Uh, and I got into the habit of, you know what? I'm going to do multiple, do a little bit of several things, you know, in a given day. Or, you know, the other method is, if you know stuff is out of place, you walk by it, just pick it up, carry it to where it needs to be, Absolutely. put it in place, and just keep doing these little things, you know, uh, and then you'll start to see the difference. In this way, you know, uh, you don't feel like, okay, I got to take out, you know, two or three hours out of my day to clean my closet. Well, you know what? Every time you go to your closet, you see something out of place, put it in place. You know, you, you know, we talk about like, you know, we want to, like we donate our clothes or old things, you know, and it's, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Nope. 
create a bag. Yeah. You know, every time you go to your closet, you see something, instead of saying, I'm going to block off a, you know, this amount of time, which becomes difficult, just squeeze it in a little at a time if that works for you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think we started doing that, especially after the move. The purge was real. Mm -hmm. The purge was real. So instead of, like you said, spending eight to 10 hours a day cleaning the closet, you do it as you go along. Every day something goes in the bag. If I come across something or we come across something, it goes in the donate bag. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we're ready to load up and take it to donate it, we don't have to worry about getting anything together. It's already together. And that's clothing, shoes, yes. household items. No matter what it is, there's a place for it and it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want you to think about when it comes to not just tangible things, but our thoughts and our emotions about things that we have limiting beliefs around. You know, again, like we used early on, the old cliche, you can't teach a dog, old, you know, old dog, dog, new, new tricks. tricks. Yes. Not true. Mm -hmm. You can. Let's get rid of that narrative in our heads because that keeps us a little bit bound. Yes, Dr. Holcomb, the purge is emotional. Yes, not just for you right now, but thank you for sharing that. And, and it's... I'll come back to that one. Yeah, yes, <laughs> it's real for a lot of us, yes. for a lot of us, because it just seems to be the, the season of consciousness mm -hmm. and awareness, self-awareness, self-awareness. Mm -hmm. If you have any level of growing about you, mm -hmm. I, I, let me caveat that, because I think that anyone who's looking to grow is doing that introspection. Mm -hmm. And it's playing on your emotions and things that you mm -hmm. thought were true, things that you held firm as a belief. We're peeling back those layers and we're mm -hmm. seeing that there are some things that we have to even shift within ourselves, mm -hmm. not only for the betterment of ourselves, but also to help others along the way. Yes. Mm -hmm. To see what their possibilities mm -hmm. are when they just get rid of mm -hmm. that emotional baggage yes you know just kind of swinging back uh to dr holcomb's you know uh point about purging that is something that also as we came over to the new year yeah did you have the opportunity to do a purge do you still need to do a purge and again she you know she mentioned emotional purge it's like when i talk to you about doing a detox you know they want to do a detox and the first thing we'll talk about is the physical Detail. Oh, what can I take for this? What can I take for that? But guess what? When you really understand that the emotional, the mental, the physical, and the spiritual are all connected, you're doing a physical detox without detoxing all the other areas, you're going to be right back where you started. Absolutely. Because it's that then diagram. Mm -hmm. All of that overlaps. Overlaps. Uh, so you want to think about, yeah, do I need, you know, and this goes back to the energy level. Again, you heard me say, I'm just a big, big believer of everything is connected. All is one and one is all. So when you're going back to that energy level that I spoke about, well, your energy levels are probably down because, like I said, your diet, or it could be, like I said, you'll probably be filled with toxic stuff. And it may not be just physical toxins. It could be mental or emotional. Mm -hmm. So all that detox, detoxification is really just purging, you know? So it's kind of one and the same. But yeah, you got to really look at it. Do I need to change what I'm watching on TV? Do I need to change what I'm listening to? Uh, you know, maybe what I'm reading, who I'm talking to. It could be any of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, so go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to piggyback off of what you said regarding mm -hmm. the emotional and the physical detox. And as an example, if you've ever watched My 600 Pound Life, individuals who are morbidly obese, they think by getting the surgery, it's going to fix everything in their lives. And, you know, Coach Darren and I talk about my fascination with the show. And it's not about watching obese people. As I explained to him, I like to see when they get to the actual root of what is triggering individuals to 
basically kill themselves by consuming mm -hmm. inordinate amounts of food, even when they know that their life depends on them stopping. And usually the trigger is caused by trauma that they've never talked about, that they suppressed. And if they don't deal with it, a lot of times you see when they do have the surgery, they eventually gain that weight back. Mm -hmm. It's not until the successful ones actually deal with the psychological traumas and the toxins that are mentally and emotionally debilitating that they actually make a change in their eating habits mm -hmm. and in their lives and in their interactions, in their relationships. Yeah. That, you know, it touches on uh, something. We're, we're in a society where it really is all about superficial, that everything is about treating the symptoms and not the cause. Our whole healthcare system is built on that. The Western healthcare system is built on, you go in, the doctor may ask me, what's the problem? Oh, it's my blood pressure. Here's a prescription. Your blood, high blood pressure is a symptom. It's not a disease. Mm -hmm. Same thing with diabetes. These are all symptoms. Mm -hmm. They're treating the symptoms. So we live in a world where everything's about treating the symptoms and we never get to the cause. And that's just another example. So when you're doing your, when it comes back to yourself and you're, you're making that change, you're going to have to keep digging deeper. Mm -hmm. This is where, you know, we talked about that role of self-discovery. Uh, and there are, you know, uh, you know, books out there now where you could pretty much that will guide you through the process of doing, you know, some of the work yourself. If you're not in a position or you don't want to go to a therapist, uh, you know, there are ways of working on yourself. Is it the end all be all? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> What? <clears throat> um, Jesse said, Pastor John used to say you have to change that stinking thinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true because yeah. it's toxic. Yep. Uh -huh. It's toxic. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> the most important thing at this point is, you know, you got to start. Uh, you know, have you started, which is what we talked about, which was going to be our kind of a focus tonight was really find out, you know, have, you know, you know have people start, you know, uh, have you started, you know, and if you have it, why do you think you, you have it? What's been the cause? And you want to be able to answer those questions truthfully, you know, if it means, ah, I was just lazy, just didn't do it, then say it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because that's part of the process too. That's part of the purging is purging out the nonsense, the BS, the lies that you've been telling yourself. You know, uh, because we know most of the reasons we don't move forward quite often is really, you know, uh, excuses. Uh, you know, mm. you know mm. I, I think we need to find the causal effect. You know, what's really causing us to be stuck mm -hmm. in the place. And Tiffany, what's really causing you to hold on to socks that are older than your son? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I I know, it, you know, it, it might be, you know, I'm going to wear those one day. Uh -huh. I have an outfit that those will match or what have uh -huh. you. But if the moths haven't eaten them up, good for you. You have a cedar chest or something. Get rid of the socks. Yes. Uh -huh. By, it'll give you a reason not to pick up a bad habit, but to replace them with new ones. So get rid of the socks. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. And again, it, it, it's funny because just for the last two weeks, I, I just purged some socks. I had new socks and I had held on to these old socks. And here was my here's my mentality, my thinking. Well, you know what? If I'm ever walking around the house in just socks, you know, no flip-flops or anything, I don't want to wear new socks, I wear the old ones. But it was just that was like that excuse just wasn't holding water anymore. And I, <laughs> again, in that moment when it is it's in the the front of your mind, you get that little bit of courage to grab them and toss them, you know, put them in the garbage. Yeah. And if you have to put them deep down in the garbage, put them in the outside. And I also people put them in a place where you know, you will not go back and take them out. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I have a, a habit of tossing things. Mm -hmm. I will toss except for my shoes and my clothes. Now I will hold on to um, Tiffany 
you know, I'm, I'm teasing you, but I will hold on to clothing because, you know, a lot of times you can repurpose and fashion, it comes and goes. However, like I said, last year, as I was going through my closet, I was like, you know what? Even if the fashion comes back, there's going to be a different stitching. So <laughs> let me get rid of this. I don't yeah. need it. Even if I could still wear it. And I had gowns that young ladies could possibly use who can't afford gowns to go to their prom or maybe even as a bridesmaid, whatever it was, I was blocking somebody's blessing. So I just donated, I mm -hmm. donated, I donated. And what really got me to donate my shoes was I was out to lunch with Coach Darren and his daughter walking down the sidewalk and my heel came completely off of, <laughs> off of my, my sandal and I was wearing wedges. The entire wedge came off and I hobbled, you know, throughout lunch. And in that moment, I said, from now on, no more shoes. I'm not holding on to shoes mm -hmm. for decades, even if they're cute and they're still stylish and it may match an outfit, I'll buy another pair. Mm -hmm. So purge, purge, because yes. holding on to the old stuff weighs you down. Yes. And sometimes it takes you out of the game. Yeah. And it prevents, you know, to say it prevents the new from coming in. So you want to make, make room. So you get, yeah, you get rid of it all. And as, Coach Mitchell just mentioned, you could be you know, giving a blessing to someone else. And that's what all of this is about is again, you know what? It'll make you feel better and you can make somebody else feel better. You know, and what else, you know, Amen. what more could, could you ask? Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what this life is all about. Yeah. Now, you might have a short moment of separation anxiety, but you'll get over it quickly. Quickly. You know? Yeah. Now, after a while, you won't even realize, you know, like I said, oh, I got more space in my drawer now, you know, and 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 I was really bad because my socks didn't even match anymore, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I had new socks sitting right next to them, yeah, but I, yeah, I held on to them. It, who knows why? Well, I'm <laughs> glad you were able to work through that. <laughs> so yeah. you know, we're coming up on the top of the hour. Any closing remarks um, for those that are listening yep. before we close yep. out? Again, two most important. Well, I'm. Gonna, kind of squeeze three, but two most important is just start. Uh, don't worry about things being in a particular manner. Just start. And you've heard me say this before, you know, you want to standardize before you optimize because people will spend time trying to get things right. No, you just get into that habit of doing something. That's the standardization. So it becomes a habit. So it eventually becomes a lifestyle. You know, then you refine it, you know, and that's the optimization part. Uh, you want to become comfortable asking questions mm -hmm. with areas that you don't know. Reach out, leverage the, the resources that you have. It's just, you know, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make a, a lot of sense to be stuck because you don't know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in 2024, there's no reason why any of us shouldn't be commanding more from ourselves. Yes. Remember that our opinions really don't matter. Mm -hmm. It's just good conversation filler, mm -hmm. but our opinions really don't matter. We need to make sure that we're committing to growing and learning so that we can pass that knowledge on, like Coach Darren said, to others, because it's going to help someone else live a life that is just surpasses where they are today. So just commit to doing not just your very best, but doing what you can to move forward. And if you need an accountability partner or partners, we're here to support you in that regard. And that, you know, through your actions and unwavering commitment, you can achieve anything that you set out to achieve. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Coach Mitchell. And I'm Coach Darren. And remember, there will be no next if you do not start now. Or if you do not start now, there will be no, no, no next. next. Have an amazing night. And thanks once again for joining us and for an engaging um, interaction and discussion.